Hello, hello. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Arvind Tiwari, and I work in CTO uh, Innovation Group of Cisco Cloud Services. Okay, and today I'm going to talk about InterCloud Federation model. So these are my uh, agenda for uh, today's talk. At the end, I'll take some question and answer. So I'll start with introduction. And uh, as part of introduction, I would like to give some idea like how technological ad advancement evolve multiple business model and how it is related to uh, InterCloud. <clears throat> so around uh, 10 years or more than that uh, before, uh, there used to be traditional computing. And uh, it was an era of fiscal resource when um, enterprises, whether they are in uh, uh, computing business or, business or not, they have to uh, uh, maintain a, a physical data center. And they have to put a lot of uh, 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 resources to maintain that data, data center. And whenever there is a need for uh, computing resource from their business unit, so it has to go through multiple provisioning uh, requests. And uh, eventually, somebody has to set up a physical resources in data center, like uh, uh, machines, routers, and hook up those machines in the router and give it uh, to the business unit to deploy their application on a scale. And this become more challenging when uh, uh, business unit uh, want to deploy or scale their application in a multiple region. So <clears throat> after that, uh, cloud computing come, come to the picture, which uh, revolutionized the uh, industry, and uh, everything was virtual and abstract. So what essentially we got from cloud computing is uh, we got ability to uh, spin up resources in a matter of minute or hour. And uh, so traditional company computing with uh, physical resources what was not a scalable approach. And uh, cloud computing brings the more scalable way to provision the resource. And even in a multiple uh, region or multiple geo region, you can uh, <coughs> spin up uh, your resources in a matter of hour or uh, a day. <coughs> So because of the cloud computing uh, uh, advancement, there is a lot of different uh, business model evolve. So for example, large scale cloud provider, public cloud provider. So basically, they sell everything as a service and uh, pay as you go model. So in that approach, um, enterprises or uh, consumer don't have to set up their data center in the, in the, in, uh, on their premise. What they got is ability to uh, uh, use a, a pool of resources which is given by uh, the cloud provider, and they can uh, <clears throat> uh, they can spin up resources and design their uh, model their uh, uh, setup or environment and then deploy their application. Even for the uh, multi-region uh, uh, scale uh, use case, they can use the cloud provider's uh, 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 dashboard and just spin up the resources and good to go. And the, the important part here is they don't have to pay for the data center, physical data center and consultant. Uh, and the only thing is they have to uh, have a relation with the cloud provider and they can use the resources as many as they want. And they are going to, they will pay only whatever they're using for. And there is another uh, business uh, uh, arise like a private cloud provider. So there are uh, uh, providers who can go to the enterprise uh, on-premise, they can set up the cloud. And the benefit of uh, private cloud is uh, uh, enterprises can, uh, ha can have the data center in, on their premise, but that is the cloudified data center they can able to spin up resources in a matter of a minute. And uh, cloud busting and VPC is also uh, a good example where it's a hybrid mode uh, of business model where private cloud, on-premise cloud, will burst uh, uh, their uh, workload to the uh, public cloud or cloud provider whenever they need more capabilities. And uh, VPC is the same uh, 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 kind of example where uh, uh, instead of having cloud on your premise, you can use the shared set of resources in a, in a, a cloud provider's uh, data center in a, in a uh, uh, virtual private uh, uh, cloud fashion. Cloud resellers or white labeling business model is another example uh, uh, of the cloud uh, technology. So, so in a pure reseller approach, uh, reseller don't have uh, the cloud capabilities, but what they do is they have relation with multiple cloud provider and put a wrapper, wrapper on top of those cloud and give uh, services to the to their consumer. And uh, <clears throat> now it is time for intercloud intercloud federation. So. 
intercloud is uh, essentially a multi cloud provider uh, multi multi cloud multi provider a multi partner based collaboration which is the focus of our talk today so fine uh, intercloud <clears throat> intercloud federation so before going to the intercloud federation i would like to uh, tell some background about the intercloud what it is because intercloud federation is based on the intercloud so intercloud is a globally connected network of cloud distributed loosely integrated cloud and which is heterogeneous what that means is <clears throat> uh, so basically there are multiple cloud involved in the intercloud to form a intercloud and uh, it is heterogeneous what that means is individual cloud can be uh, operated and managed by different business unit platform may be different because somebody can use open stack somebody can uh, use uh, vmware or maybe anything or maybe proprietary for public cloud resources may be different uh, and uh, the resource flavor may be different so it is a pretty heterogeneous uh, concept support federation which is important one because consumer can allocate resource anywhere in the intercloud and intercloud is basically uh, a combination of multiple cloud in multiple geo region so uh, consumer can al uh, allocate own resources anywhere in the intercloud and uh, and they can design their workload modeling and migration there's a project going on in uh, IEEE community, and I picked some of the sentences from uh, uh, their uh, specification. So as per IEEE, uh, one cloud must be able to find one or more other clouds. Cloud uh, instances must be able to dialogue with each other, willing and able to accept an interoperability transaction. So basically, essentially, um, what they are coming up with is, is a huge distributed uh, uh, system of clouds where each cloud can able to find another cloud in the proximity and they can able to uh, communicate with each other whenever there is a need for resource provisioning or uh, interoperability uh, use cases <clears throat> okay here comes the uh, intercloud federation so intercloud federation is uh, nothing but a, a business uh, a model or technical concept to bring multiple cloud provider under one platform and so intercloud federation basically offers a single platform to the consumer to consume cloud resources from multiple providers so in this picture you can see that there are multiple uh, cloud provider uh, are collaborating but for the consumer it, it 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 seems like it's a one cloud one platform so basically intercloud federation support multi provider collaboration which is what we are um, showing here and uh, resource utilization across cloud so that is the whole point of intercloud federation because user want to have uh, you want to consume resources from multiple uh, cloud provider and why that I'll I'll be uh, um, explaining in a bit and promote interoperability because if there are multiple cloud providers or multiple platforms or technology involved in the intercloud and if the end user have to deal with uh, the 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 platform specific uh, uh, complexity then that is not a good uh, use case or um, that is not a good user experience so it has to support interoperability in a seamless manner and transparent to the consumer <clears throat> that means uh, who is offering what who is the provider what is the geo region has to be transparent to the consumer and what kind of services they are offering what is what are the geo region they are operating from <clears throat> and uh, next uh, it's uh, domain and actors of the intercloud or intercloud federation so essentially this is the domain of intercloud and in this domain there are multiple providers cloud providers all over uh, um, in the world and they have they are offering different services different resources and uh, <clears throat> so this is the first set of actor so th those are the cloud provider or uh, now <clears throat> and the second set of actors are consumers right so enterprises marketplace individual consumer our processes who is who are consuming the cloud resources from uh, uh, are, are are the second set of uh, actors and this is essentially the intercloud which is a uh, uh, <clears throat> heterogeneous uh, uh, setup and <clears throat> and hostile setup so in this intercloud you can see there are multiple uh, cloud provider who want to uh, participate in the intercloud but there are there are providers uh, who don't want to work with some uh, uh, some provider for example but they want to participate in the intercloud so 
so for example, um, uh, there is a provider in Australia. They can they they can say, okay, I want to work with Cisco because I have a better relation with Cisco, but not with X Y Z because of some business relation. Who knows? So basically. <clears throat> It is, a, it is a heterogeneous environment, there are multiple providers, some are the partner, some are non-partner, and there are public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud, and platforms may be different, and uh, <clears throat> maybe somebody is using OpenStack, somebody, uh, some, some provider are using VMware, and resources are dynamic and flavors uh, are different. So this is basically the domain and actors uh, for the intercloud. So it is. It looks pretty complex and uh, complex to achieve. But uh, what are the motivation to uh, to go for the intercloud? <clears throat> so these are the motivation from. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, so there are two two actors. First is consumer, and uh, other is provider. So if you look uh, from the consumer's eye, so basically they got uh, provider resilience. So. What that means is they can they can work with multiple provider. They can model their workload with multiple provider, and they can they can operate in a mix and match manner, right? Scope to scale basically. <clears throat> suppose uh, there um, there is a consumer who in one region who has relation with one cloud provider, which is his primary primary cloud provider, and that provider don't have capability in other region, right? But Business need is to scale over there, right? So one approach is they can have a relation with somebody else over there. Or other approach is uh, uh, they can. They, uh, so with the intercloud concept, uh, they don't have to deal with other uh, provider. They can have a relation. They, they can keep relation with their primary provider or favorite provider. And with the intercloud concept, they can have resources in other region also. More service uh, uh, coverage and offering. Again, one cloud provider cannot offer uh, offer everything. But with the intercloud concept, they can get more services uh, uh, through the different providers. And workload migration and disaster recovery is another scenario where consumer want to use multiple cloud provider. Okay, and uh, for providers, basically they got a global consumer reach. What that means is, for example, um, um, there is a um, provider in Australia, right? And they have very uh, efficient in. The, uh, uh, they are very efficient in Australia. And they know that, uh, and they cannot deploy or set up cloud in U.S. region because of obvious reason. It's costly thing to deploy a cloud, and they are not effective here. So for them, they can join the intercloud and they can work with the partner who is in the uh, in the U.S. region. For example, Cisco. Cisco has a big presence in uh, uh, U.S., so they can they can collaborate, and they got the global consumer reach, right? And effective investment, what that means is, okay, I'm effective in Australia, then why should I uh, put my money in the uh, US? And I don't know how many consumer I have, I'm going to put more money here, and I'll join the intercloud so that I'll get the consumer from the US region also. And more reason for local consumer, what that means is each, each cloud pro provider have their own set of consumers, right? So for those consumer, scaling is the need, right? They want to grow in different region, so, uh, and this, Provider cannot able to provide those, uh, cannot able to set up their cloud on the other region. So instead of that, they, they can use the intercloud partner-based collaboration, and they can help their customers. Uh, better return of in investment. That is obvious because you don't have to put money in each region. You are going to put wherever you have more effective. And uh, okay, fine. So there are enough motivation to join intercloud. And uh, so how? So. Um, as I mentioned, it's not easy. So these are the problem, concern, and challenges uh, uh, to join intercloud federation business model. So for providers, these are the uh, uh, concern or challenges. First, uh, how to federate cap uh, capabilities, right? So as I mentioned, like it is a hostile uh, uh, setup. It's a complex setup. And in this setup, I want to federate my capabilities, my resources. I, I want to join the intercloud, but I want to federate in a such a way that uh, I should. It's a trusted, uh, trust-based and policy-based uh, uh, federation model. Basically, I want to work with Cisco, but I don't want to work with X, right? So I want capability to expose or federate in in such a manner so that I can define policy around my resources, so that my, I I only deal with uh, uh, my favorite partners, right? <clears throat> and policy-based resource exposure that means. Okay, I want to join the uh, uh, intercloud business model, but I'm not going to expose all the 
all the uh, uh, capability what I have. I want to expose certain capabilities for the Intercolor Federation. And uh, um, uh, I have certain idle resources uh, uh, which I want to expose for the Federation um, um, dynamically. So how I can do those things, right? Pricing and discount, another thing. For example, I have, uh, uh, I have a relation with Cisco, and I know Cisco is a bigger uh, 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 provider, and they have bigger cu consumer, uh, customer base. So I would like to give better pricing to uh, uh, Federation, which is coming through Cisco, right? Because they have uh, to, to uh, uh, be in the competition, right? OSS and BSS, another uh, uh, concern, for example, resource provisioning and quota management. For example, OK, InterCloud is a very good, but uh, let's say my consumer want to uh, uh, have resources in other region, how the provisioning will work. How, it has to be seamless, right? Otherwise, my customer is going to be uh, going to pay, right? Quota management is another concern. So for example, uh, in a particular region, I have a consumer who, who is very, uh, uh, I mean, they have a, enough quota, and they want the same experience in other cloud. So how those concerns will be managed handle right incidents and support uh, intercloud monitoring so it so intercloud is a big distributed uh, setup right and we cannot guarantee that each and every cloud or resources or services are up and running that's fine but there has to be some way it those information those monitoring and event has to be provided to the 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 partner in the intercloud so that they can react based on those event <clears throat> identity federation is a uh, is an important one so I'm a provider, I have my uh, consumer, when they are going to uh, have resources on other uh, provider, how the identity will be managed, how to federate the identity. Anonymization is another use case where, where consumer don't want, don't want to consume the resource, but they don't want to expose their, themselves to the other side. <clears throat> Return of federation is, uh, is uh, important because that is the whole point of doing the uh, federation. So me how the metering of resources will be handled, for example, if in a particular region I'm, uh, I'm managing resource on behalf of my partner, how the meeting information will be given to those uh, partners so that I can get my bill and what are the other costs to join the intercloud business model, right? So next is consumers. <clears throat> and uh, so these are the consumers concerned, basically who is offering what and where. So for example, okay, intercloud is a pretty cool concept, but uh, if it is not, easy to use, then there's no use of it, right, for, as a consumer. So there has to be uh, some way, like how, to, how, how should I get, how should I discover, like, okay, who is providing what services, what are the geo reason they are operating in, what are the pricing model they have, how do I, let's say I have a, a specific need in a particular region, then I should be able to just query some, somewhere uh, in a uniform way, and I should be able to get the information, okay, these are the provider, they can offer me service, uh, these kind of service, right? And uh, user experience is another thing. When I was, as a consumer, when I was uh, dealing with one cloud provider, I had a very good experience. They had a very good UI, and from there I can. But if intercloud, there are multiple provider. If I have to deal with multiple UIs or multiple APIs or schema or platform specific uh, uh, complexity, then that's that's pain for me, right, as a consumer. <clears throat> and why do I care about the platform specific API schema? So, for example, if in intercloud there are multiple providers they are operating with different cloud uh, uh, technologies then uh, <clears throat> they must be uh, they must uh, uh, so i have to use different apis or schemas uh, uh, platform specific that is a complexity for me i don't want to do do this right identity federation and data security is a very important one because if i have to use my uh, certain resource on uh, somebody else cloud then i have to uh, expose myself right so fine, uh, <clears throat> these are the concerns. And uh, now I'll, I'll talk about, about different uh, uh, intercloud federation model. How, uh, so essentially there are two type of uh, uh, federation model. One is called hub and, uh, hub and spoke federation model and another is called uh, full mesh federation model which I'll explain a little bit later. So in hub and spoke federation model, uh, uh, there, are, there is a component called uh, 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 federation hub. So basically, Federation Hub is a is a most intelligent component of uh, Hub and Spoke Federation model, and in this uh, uh, approach, basically uh, a provider mostly it is it is a marketplace provider or a reseller kind of uh, business engagement. So 
marketplace provider or the reseller have a relation with multiple cloud providers and they set up those cloud in the in the uh, uh, in the federation hub in a such a way and in a, in some time and more f fancier implementation of federation hub this component exposes its own set of apis and schemas okay so that way it is for the consumer for the consumer it is totally abstracted like what is uh, uh, to whom they are dealing with right and uh, in case of ma marketplace based uh, 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 provider right uh, let's say you are offering service th through marketplace so consumer can can uh, interface will interface with marketplace and they don't deal with this component directly right so it is uh, almost abstracted, abstracted like whom uh, they are dealing with and in case of reseller based approach where they want to expose apis so that cons customer can automate their uh, workload from the uh, from their application or something right so they provide uh, uh, specific apis which is exposed by this component and uh, <clears throat> so this this approach is easy to implement because uh, <clears throat> Uh, and this is very uh, common. Uh, and uh, okay, so these are the properties of uh, hub and spoke federation. Basically, abstract underlying provider. That is true because hub component is is going to abstract all the underlying provider. It's, it's, it is a proxy based approach for platform agnostic model, and it is again a proxy proxy based approach for interoperability. Basically. It is a, uh, uh, a provider interoperability and uh, platform interoperability. <clears throat> Mostly static, what that means is uh, uh, those uh, uh, you have to set up the resources, the APIs in the in the in the uh, hub to to uh, federate the uh, across the cloud and search, select provider uh, and services. Able, so basically, ability to provision resource across provider that it gives because hub is the most intelligent component whenever. Consumers say, okay, I want to uh, uh, spin up resources in a certain region. Uh, then it is hub who do the orchestration and uh, provide workload migration that is uh, that is there. Hub generally not reusable across provider. So suppose in this uh, <coughs> multi-cloud provider uh, environment, let's say each provider want to offer uh, a, a marketplace kind of uh, service and uh, they want to reuse this component, but this this component is not reusable because there is a lot of business um, logic embedded in those components, right? And uh, <clears throat> OSS and BSS uh, across provide it 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 provides certain level of OSS BSS capability, but not uh, all. Identity federation is another thing. In this approach, sometimes identity is totally abstracted from the provider. So the reseller or the marketplace provider keep the identity of the consumer and. Underneath uh, 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 the, the the this uh, OS, sorry uh, underneath the hub, I, I, the pro provider don't propagate the identities to the provide uh, to the underlying cloud provider. That is one approach. Another approach is <clears throat> they federate they federate the identities, but uh, uh, they have to use the third party systems uh, to do that. Okay, so next uh, uh, is full mesh federation. In full mesh federation, there are uh, two components. One is uh, intercloud uh, federation service, another is called uh, intercloud uh, gateway or router. So, intercloud federation service is a, a global distributed service maintained and managed by uh, a trusted uh, uh, authority, or sometimes it can be managed by the each cloud provider. And cloud provider <coughs> uh, define the trust and policy and what resource they want to expose to this component. And they, this component is also responsible for uh, providing the intercloud monitoring and events. So whenever there is an event hap, uh, happening in a one cloud provider, it can be propagated to this component. <clears throat> and this is a distributed, globally distributed component. And so the information is available to each uh, uh, each uh, provider or uh, consumer in each region. And uh, <clears throat> consumers can. Okay, and this component also exposes a uniform set of APIs for resource discovery. Okay, so consumer can use those APIs to discover, like, okay, what resources they want, what, who, who, who are the provider, what are the geo regions they are operating from, and if they have certain uh, resource need, they can query uh, that need from this component. That okay, I have, I want this kind of uh, resource in this region. Give me who, who are uh, the provider can help me. <clears throat> So okay, fine. You got uh, so consumer got 
the list of provider that okay these are the provider in that region can uh, have this uh, capability uh, they can offer that based on certain factor maybe pricing maybe business uh, relation you can choose that okay i want to use this provider and then instead of uh, uh, going to the each provider individually what you are going to do is you are going to request those thing from your uh, primary provider that okay i want to allocate resource on uh, that region from that provider but that request will be given to the your local provider and from there the intercloud gateway kicks in so intercloud gateway is a pluggable component basically it it is it is a uh, so it knows uh, so for example let's say <clears throat> uh, so so intercloud gateway you have to uh, uh, it knows like okay what are the underlying uh, cloud technology i'm using and whenever there is an intercloud uh, uh, resource provisioning need it translate the uh, request to the, the uh, in a generic protocol and request to the, the to the, the to the uh, partner cloud so basically it's a cloud to cloud direct uh, uh, communication and <clears throat> Uh, for a particular request, uh, this component translate the the generic protocol to the native protocol for the resource provisioning or or any kind of request, right? And the provisioning will be done, and response will be translated in the standard response or standard protocol, and given to the to the requester cloud. <clears throat> and so basically, this uh, intercloud gateway is a pluggable component which abstract all the underlying platform or technology or the uh, providers. And third-party integration. What that means is this is the place where you can hook up your third-party <clears throat> uh, system. For example, identity management or billing. And this is the communication channel where where provider can push the metering data and they can query the quota. And there is a lot of information they can exchange between the provider to provider. So these are the pro properties of intercloud federation service. Basically, manages generic concern. It is reusable across uh, uh, provider. Trust and policy-based federation. You can define your trust and policy around the uh, resources. Uniform. It exposes <clears throat> uh, re uniform API to discover uh, resources, provider services, and parameter-based cap capability inspection uh, and uh, intercloud monitoring alerts and notification. So those are the very important uh, um, aspect which is needed for OS and BSS. And intercloud gateways or router is pluggable integration of uh, multiple clouds, <clears throat> uh, platform API schema abstraction. Basically, it gives you, uh, it's translate the native to uh, to the standard protocol. So basically, it's a, it's a, it's a interoperable, and uh, it give it is a platform agnostic way to integrate different cloud in the intercloud. <clears throat> Resource provisioning across uh, trusted partner provide workload migration. So this is the component where you can build your uh, um, portal, and it can give you a single pane of glass for intercloud, right? So from there you can look up the resources. Like for example, who uh, for your consumer, what are the resources they have uh, 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 with the different providers? So the, the, this component is going to provide those kind of capability. <clears throat> this is also going to give a certain level of identity federation capability because in the hub and spoke federation you have more control. Then the uh, sorry uh, in the in the full mesh federation you have more con more control and uh, this will give you OSS and BSS across provider for example metering and billing notification global quota enforcement and it it will give you uh, it will help uh, uh, <coughs> resolving support and incidents kind of use cases so that was uh, all for my talk if you have any question let me know I'll try to answer.